We're going to look at a few of these problems. We'll look at this one first. We've got a congruency triangle uh, problem where we're trying to prove whether or not that they are congruent. So if this is the given information, these two angles and these two sides, we are wondering what we could use to prove that they're congruent. And right now, all we have is a side and an angle, so none of these are really there. But I can get my vertical angles right here, which would give me two angles and a side that's not in between it, which would be letter D. So that one would work beautifully for that. Let's look at 59. 59 is a little confusing with this part here. So what I want to do is I want to include just the given information that we need. We need our 35 degrees, and we are looking for this angle X. We're told that the chimney is perpendicular to the horizontal line. And we're tr trying to figure this out. Now, there's two ways that we can do it. We have our triangles equal 180 here, and then linear angles. Or this is the exterior angle theorem, and the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior. So 90 plus 35 is 125. Either way is fine. For this one here, <coughs> we have some given information. We are told that these are both 90. We should know that those are both vertical and therefore equal to each other. And so I have similar triangles, and this one here is supposed to be uh, four. Oh, I need to sneeze. <laughs> oh, wow, bless me. So I have this is four, and this is sixteen. So this should be four times more. Um, I should have a one to four ratio, but we can also just kind of set up a ratio. So x goes with the three, as sixteen goes with the four. So we can look at it that way, and again. We just need to multiply by 4 or multiply, <coughs> cross multiply. Either one is totally fine. It's going to give you 12 is your answer for x there. All right, you guys had some question. Oh, just one question on the back, so let's look at that one here. So this is my setup. My setup is supposed to be outside times the whole. So outside times the whole. The whole here is 21. And outside times the whole. Now, just like I didn't multiply 12 times 9, I'm not going to multiply 5 times x, so it's going to be 5 plus x. So I'm going to multiply 12 times 21. Oh, that's not going to work. 12 times 21 is 252. And I'm going to have an x squared plus a 5x when I do my little distributive there. And that is either factorable or completing the square or uh, quadratic formula. Um, I'm looking at factors of 252. I don't even know what factors of 252 are, but. I do know quadratic formula, so that is my route. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we have tw 252 times 4 Woo! is 1008, and that is going to be positive, and I need to add a 25 to that. So I have negative 5 plus or minus 1033 all over 2. So I need to very, be very careful about how I put this in my calculator. So I need to have a parentheses, negative 5 plus the square root of 1008. No, 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 1033. Now, I'm closing this parentheses. I need to close it, ad, oops, close it again so that the whole numerator is on top, and then divide that whole entire thing by 2. I'm going to get 13.57, but I just hit second and then enter, and that gets me back up here, so I can just hit. Now, I can't hit the, my, uh, the negative button, because that will not work. What I need to do is hit the subtract button. And then I get a negative answer. Well, the negative answer obviously can't be. So it must be the positive answer. The thing about uh, quadratic formula and squaring things is sometimes you end up getting answers that aren't actually solutions in there. Okay, let's go ahead and look at two more. Let's look at 72 and 73. So for 72, you have four black shorts, oh, lots of socks. What's the probability of pulling out three black socks in a row? So we actually have seven socks, but uh, black socks. But we have 7 plus 17. Oops. Which is what, 24? So I multiply that. Did I do that right? 7, 9. Oh, no, I did not do that right. Um, this is 
short and black here, long and black here is 12 white socks, five of which are short, which means seven are long. So I actually just have seven plus three plus 12. So that is my total. Now, once I pull out one black sock, I only have six left, and then I only have five left. So a little magic on here as well. So we're gonna do seven divided by 19 times six divided by 18 times five divided by 17 equals, and then I'm gonna do math fraction, which means I wanna put the answer back into a fraction. And I get 35 over nine, 68, nine, big fatty number. So the next one is, what is the probability of pulling out a short white sock? Do, 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 five out of 19. And then a long black sock, three out of 18. So we do that math again, we do the same thing, 5 divided by 19 times 3 divided by 18 equals math, frac, answer, 5 out of 114. So here, if you reached in and you know you pulled out a white one, so there's 12, that you it's one of those 12, what is the probability that it's a short pair? So it would be 5 out of 12. And our last one, we're deciding whether to go to beach. So beach, we're 30% sure. And so that means the skate park must be 70. 40% um, of injury at the beach. 70% of injury at the skate park. What's the probability that he goes to the beach and get injured? You multiply those together. So that would be a measly 12%. But what is the probability that he gets injured at all tomorrow? Here's my 12%. Here's my 49%, and when I add them together, I get my 61%. All right, thanks for playing.